Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Through My Lens. I'm your host. My name is Christina Bellevue from Christina in Color and Misty Consulting, Inc. And today is a great interview that we're having with Master Business and Sales Coach Extraordinaire, Wendy Y. Bailey. I'm extremely happy and pleased to have her with us. And tonight is going to be a fun conversation. We're going to talk about everything life, business, and of course, eyewear, because this is how we got acquainted and became friends over our mutual love and appreciation for eyewear. So Wendy, why? Tell us more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, you know, the question, thank you for having me, first of all, Christina. And the question that I always answer, uh, that, that people always ask is, why is it Wendy why? And why yes. not just Wendy? Why the why? Yeah, <laughs> why, why Wendy why, right? So uh, the answer is real, real simple. When I first came on to social media, and I was an earlier, early adopter, like around 2008. And, um, you know, I was still, it was still small enough that you could have conversations with people on Twitter, you got to know people because it was like 200, 300,000 people. And when I went to LinkedIn, there were 25 profiles for Wendy Bailey. So I knew that I had to distinguish myself. And I had at that point gone through some close networking organizations, you know, where you meet with the same group of people every week for breakfast or lunch. In our case, it was breakfast. And you stood up and you did your 60 second infomercial. And I always used my middle initial, which is why. Ah. So I started saying Wendy Y. Bailey. I would say, hi, everyone. I'm Wendy Y. Bailey. And, you know, I would share whatever. And they would pass leads to me. And um, a couple people in the group started calling me Wendy Y. So when I saw that LinkedIn thing, I was like, okay, I need to distinguish myself. And this is how I do it. I'm so glad I did. And now I'm really adamant about people pronouncing the Y, the second Y, because I looked recently and there are 250 profiles of Wendy, Wendy. on LinkedIn. Who knew? You know? Wow. So and I... Yes, is how you find me and I'll share this and, and then, you know, I'll, I'll yield the, the floor to you. I tell people all the time, if you Google Wendy Bailey, you get the musician who's on my mailing list for quite some time. You get the psychologist, the attorney, you get the college professor. But if you Google Wendy Y. Bailey, you get me all day long for like three pages. That's amazing. And one thing I found particular and interesting is that it's Wendy Y for with Wendy. It's not Wendy Y Bailey. It's Wendy Y Bailey. So it, it stands out as well when we type it in Google exactly. or when we're looking for you. It's kind of funny when I talk to people and I say it's Wendy Y Bailey, they think that it's Y Bailey. They're like, how do you spell that Y Bailey? Right. So I have to tell them it's Wendy Y, W-E-N-D-Y, Bailey, B like boy, A-I-L-E-Y. They don't get it. You know, it's part of, I think, my Southern accent that makes them think that the Y goes with the Bailey instead of the Wendy. Right, right. Makes you stand out, makes you unique. We love it. Yeah. I still remember the first time we met and I yeah. think I only called you Wendy and he said, no, no, it's Wendy Y. And I was like, oh, yeah, hey, I Wendy Y. Yes. I don't have a problem. I do a lot of um, virtual speaking and I'm always correcting people because they, they come up to me as part of the training and they say, well, Wendy, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Wendy Y. And they say, okay, well, Wendy. And I'm like, Wendy Y, you know, <laughs> and I have to do it a few times and it's funny because there was a time when people had a real problem with me correcting them. And I just had to get over it. And I figured they needed to go get over it too. And so between the two of us getting over it, whoever the other person is, they get now that Wendy Y is my name, right? It's your my name. mom even calls me Wendy Y. My 90 year old mom calls me Wendy Y. That's awesome. So it is your name. It is your brand. You've yes. been in business for over 19 years. You've worked with a variety of clients, mm -hmm. uh, different projects. So tell us a little bit more about the types of people that you help with your services. Well, it took me a while to get to a place where I was really definitive about who that was. And I went through a number of iterations of who I served. Today, I'm, it's crystal clear to me. 
I serve coaches, other coaches who are, or people who are in what I call the transformation space. That means that they're in the business of changing lives or careers or workplaces or health or wellness or, you know, um, life, right? And because of that, there's a, a certain methodology that, that I teach them around marketing and selling and doing business. For me, it's infrastructure, it's looking at their business processes and systems and how to automate those things. It's also about visibility and marketing strategies and what I call unconventional or non-traditional launch strategies, because I believe when you launch, it should be something authentic and something that's effective for you, not something you've seen other people do in the marketplace. It's also about sales mastery. So I talk to my clients and teach them that sales is a conversation and it's not just one-on-one, -on -one, it's one-to-many. It's um, not just those kind of conversations, but it's on your sales pages. So your, what I call emotional promotional copy is a sales conversation. Your email marketing is sales conversations at their best. So once you understand that, you can master them and ensure that they're really effective in converting clients from free clients to paid clients. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a big part of what I do. I coach other coaches. And that's one thing I found interesting when we first connected on a platform called Lunch Club was our conversation. Our conversation was compelling. It was thought provoking. I remember walking away thinking about a lot of things after our conversation. And, you know, we have many things in common because I also, you know, evolve in the sales and business space, specifically more marketing and especially multicultural marketing. That's my day job and, and, and expertise that I've developed over the years. So that is something, you know, kind of the both of us evolving in the business sales marketing space is something we have in common. And something else we have in common is our love for eyewear, because that was the other thing that I walked away with is finally, I met another amazing <laughs> Black woman who is equally into eyewear as I am, because that's quite rare. Now, people are into glasses more nowadays because glasses are becoming more affordable, more ubiquitous. They're more of a style statement now than a corrective medical device. Um, but meeting another Black woman who is, you know, who loves an glasses. Addict. Yes, an addict. I didn't want to use that word, but sure. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an addict. I to wean myself off, you know. Yeah, we talked about this. When I talked, I think I was still in my, ooh, there's another pair that I can get tomorrow month, right? <laughs> and since our fir very first conversation, I had to delete the app off of my phone because I was like, I, I can't buy any more glasses, right? That was and a Zelo app, right? Yeah. Zilu, yes. Yes, yeah. I remember And that. I got out of the group of 14,000 other eyewear addicts because <laughs> I would see something that they would post and I would say, ooh, I hadn't seen that pair on there. Let me go find them. And I bought two pair. I know just looking at stuff in the group. So I had to kind of back up a little bit. Yeah. And my collection is, is, I like my collection. It gives me enough variety and style. So I don't need any more glasses right now because Fair I got enough. them, you know? Yeah. So how many pieces in your collection right now? I think I counted after we talked and it's about 15, 16 pair. Okay. It's one pair that I don't really wear, but that's why I said 15, 16 pair. Mm -hmm. And are those opticals and sunglasses or opticals only? Mostly, uh, I don't have any sunglasses. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. One of the things that I learned, and it's been... It's been probably about six years or so, maybe a little bit longer. I learned that when you wear sunglasses, it impacts some kind of um, vision in your, like I'm saying vision, like it's, it, it impacts something that triggers something in your brain that doesn't work properly. So after that, girl, don't, don't quote me on it because I know I'm not explaining it right. Okay. But, but yeah, I know I'm not, but something about, when the um, when there's a pain that's colored impacts how your brain responds to uh, sunlight and it causes the the body the brain to do something that negatively or adversely affects the body uh -huh. so I just I stopped doing sunglasses after I read that or heard that somewhere I read it somewhere. oh okay mm -hmm. I might have to look that up because I'm addicted to sunglasses I think I have 
as many pairs of sunglasses as I have opticals. I just, I just love the style statement that they make. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because when I lived in Japan, um, many Japanese people don't wear sunglasses because sunglasses are associated with the Yakuza, the Japanese mafia. So you'll see a lot of Japanese people who are like this. It's, you know, it's really hot and sunny outside and they will not wear sunglasses because people might yeah. think they're part of the mafia. So you see them wow. walking around like this okay. or they have visors or they have, you know, umbrellas, sun umbrellas, uh, parasols, but yeah, no sunglasses. So I would walk around with sunglasses and I would be one of the very few people in my town <laughs> I'd be walking around with sunglasses. So they I just knew you were part of the mafia then, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> Black Yakuza, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. But uh yeah, that's really that's really interesting. So um, so yeah, so we both love, you know, glasses. So tell us more about the pair that you're wearing today because that pair is fabulous. Thank you so much. This pair is um this was one of those I saw in the Zilu group. And I went, ooh, I want those, right? And then I saw like another pair. Are they over here? Let me see. I keep them close to my, my desk because I want to, you know, I want to see what they are. Yeah. You know, I bought this pair first, but I saw this pair first. It's oh, the yes. same thing, but it's a clear version of the same eyewear. Right. Those are dope. I and I say. saw these. Yeah. And I saw these and I was like, oh, those are great. <laughs> and so I kind of put them in my wish list in the app. And then um, I saw these and I bought these first. And once I got them, I was like, oh, yeah, I need to get these too. Oh, yes. So they I went are. back and I got these. They're so, fantastic. Yeah. We'll have to leave a link in the description box below if they're still yeah. available because. I'm sure many people who watch our interview will want to get that pair of glasses. They look I, great. I love these, whether it's the clear or these. The, the thing that I love about um, eyewear, like you said, it's a style statement. Mm -hmm. I love it because it can be really bold or it can be, you know, something that because you wear it, it becomes part of your, your look, right? Yes. People who follow me on social media know to look for what pair of glasses I'm wearing. Oh, you know what I mean, yes. So it's also yeah. become a part of your personal brand. It has oh, most yeah. definitely. Um, I just started working with um, an image stylist as a client. She's my client. And, you know, as she's talking, I'm thinking, ooh, I can't wait until she can be my image coach, my image consultant, right? Because I see her um, expanding what I think of as my personal brand that, you know, flows over into my business brand and, and mm -hmm. you know, my, my company, I see how she can really expand what I'm doing with eyewear more than what I do today, you know, yes. and I'm bold enough these days to, to do a lot of things that maybe even as recently as five years ago, I wouldn't have done. That's you amazing. Know, with, with eyewear, with my style. I don't think like right now I've got on this animal print tunic. I can't, imagine that you know 10 15 years ago I would have done this so that's but I think what happens I'm sorry I was just gonna say I think what happens is you get to a certain age and you're like I really want to push the envelope I really want to you know push the boundaries on my style and what I say and it's it's sort of a I'm on the back side of 50 I'll be 59 in January and yeah, I know. I don't look at Do me. not crack for look, real. <laughs> look, I, I tell my 31-year-old son all the time, I'm too young to have a 31-year-old son. He's like, okay, mom. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't look it. But what I understand is you get to a point where it's like you don't feel like you need to have filters in every way, sense, shape, form, or fashion. Mm -hmm. And with fashion especially, I still have some, you know, classic looks and I still have, I don't do a lot of trendy stuff, but I'm bolder about what I do, even in terms of the classic looks, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, this is like, it looks trendy, but in five years, it's still going to be dope. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's kind of what I mean by pushing the envelope a little bit and doing something different. I have a pair that I want to show you. Please because, do. Uh, yeah, because I don't really wear this pair. I have a, a, 
a friend that I grew up with, a childhood friend. We grew up from, gosh, I want to say it was like the fourth or fifth grade or something like that, right? And whenever I do something new and different, he's my hype man. So I'll send him, I'll text him a photo and, um, you know, let him tell me what the deal is. And so I put these on and I sent him a photo and he was like, oh, you need to rock those, girl. I wore them one time. Uh, Actually, I've worn them twice. I tried them on once and then I wore them one time. And when my sister saw me, she started laughing. So I just, I don't do these very much because I feel like I'm, I'm like getting ready to board a spaceship or, you know, they, they just look kind of quirky. Someone that else that I grew up knowing um, has a black pair the and same she pair? rocks those. Like the exact same pair. Work. You've seen those, but these red ones to me are kind of like, shoot, I could wear it with this outfit, couldn't I? You could. Look at what I've got, I could wear wear them with this outfit. But these I don't. I just don't wear a lot because to me they push that envelope a little beyond where I'm comfortable. Mm-hmm. But that's the only pair that I have that I really don't wear frequently. I just got to get my courage up. Yeah, and, and you'll get you'll get there because you're already more open to trying different things. You know, making bolder choices, fashion wise, image wise. Mm-hmm. And I understand what you mean with that inflection point of being more comfortable pushing the envelope, because I've also had the privilege of working with um, two uh, image stylists. And it, it took my it took my sense of style and mm-hmm. the way I perceive oh, myself. I love yes. Mm-hmm. And the way I want to project myself and, and show up in the world very, like to a whole other level. Mm-hmm. And it, it's been quite a journey now when I go shopping and I have this lens that I'm that I'm looking um, you know, through for, to find the clothes. It's just, my style is more cohesive. I mm-hmm. like myself a lot better. I find I'm more yeah. authentically me. Yeah. It's a, de- a departure from what we see currently in terms of fashion trends, but I, I like that I'm owning my niche mm-hmm. and my space. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely, I wouldn't say bolder, but um, it's, 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 it's counter trendy in a way. Yeah. It's a little I, bit I, more I, retro, but I, I, I like it, retro vintage. Yeah, I, I think the what a stylist does for you or an image consultant or whatever you want to call her, I think what a what she does for you is opens your mind to the possibilities of yeah. where you can really go beyond just whatever is normal or whatever standard for anybody and everybody else. And I think they challenge you to, to be more of who you are mm-hmm. and not hide who you are and like be bold and step into um, a place that is beyond where you are just every single day or where you've gotten to, right? I met her, she was referred to me, the the client I was talking about earlier, she was referred to me by someone and it turns out we know someone in common. And that's kind of how I knew her from years ago, right? And I said to her, I said, you know, I noticed that she is, pushing the envelope a lot. This person is pushing the envelope a lot. I didn't know why, but I knew that she was really pushing her brand presence and her personal brand and her business brand, you know, and and I'm saying things like um, jewelry, um, you know, red, a, a really bold red lip, you know, the poses, the all of that goes into styling and creating a, a, a personal brand and a, um, um, a brand that's associated with your business, right? And so I've been seeing these kinds of shifts and changes in this person. So when I found out that that was why, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I can see your impact. Mm-hmm. And in fact, it's made it easier to coach her because of what I've seen in terms of her work product, you know? Very interesting, it, and it's 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 neat that you noticed. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're probably not the only one. Um, probably no. other people no. have noticed, and how yeah. it's kind of anchored that person in people's minds. And in your case, mm-hmm. she turned out to become a client, and you know, it's 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 exciting. Yeah, and I'm overdue for a photo shoot. Oh, like okay. I'm overdue. So the next one I do, she's gonna be the person who styles me 
as it relates to that. I got it. And yeah. for that photo shoot, which pair of glasses do you think you might wear? Uh, I'm pretty sure I wear these. Okay. Like and why sure. is that? Um, because to me, they're, um, I'm going to use your word and then I'll use my word. I think they're dope, right? <laughs> I also think my son would be like, mom, don't use that word. You, you just, you're not saying it right. And I'm like, well, how do you say it other than saying dope? You just don't sound right saying the word. <laughs> they're dope. Right. He says the same thing if I say, oh, that was lit. He's like, no, mom. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. He just doesn't know I'm here. Like, you know, he wants, to, he wants to act like I'm not, but I keep telling him I am. That's why I know I'm too young to have a 31 year old son, you know? But anyway, um, yeah, because they're dope. And I also think they're kind of, um, my word would be kind of funky. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're sort of um, a little bit classic, but a little bit different, different enough that even somebody else wearing the same glasses, they don't look the same as me, right? True. So this pair definitely, okay? And if you want me to show you a couple other pairs, do you want me to show you a couple? Yes, other would love to. Okay, so uh, this is another pair. It's so weird that I'm you know, trying them on with, with this outfit, but I would wear these as well. <gasps> Those are fun. These Those are, are my fun. burgundy ones. And, you know, I love the look of a burgundy one. Yes. And where um, are those from? These are from Zillow Zilo okay. as well. Okay. Yeah. I've only gotten two pair from another provider. All of my glasses, all of my eyewear come from Zillow. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The other ones come from Vogue Me. Yeah. Yeah, Vogue Me is the other one. Vogue Me has this in some other colors as well, but these came from Zillow. And what I tried to do as I was building out my collection is I tried to look at something that didn't look exactly like something I already had. I also tried to, to challenge myself in terms of the style. My first, my two uh, first pair of glasses, this is supposed to be floral. It looks darker than than what floral oh, does. I like this one. Kind of a twist on a floral pair. Yeah. A little bit, yeah, a little bit darker, yeah. deeper. Yeah. Nice I contrast with your complexion. Right. I thought I was getting something that was a little bit lighter, but I'm okay that that that's ended up being darker. Mm -hmm. Now this is a pair that the first time I wore them, I wore them with another animal print top that I have. I was celebrating my birthday and I had this really bright red lip from the lip bar. I love the lip yeah. bar. Is yeah. it the, the boss color? The, yes, yeah. the it's one that boss, Michelle Obama really, was wearing. And yes. it's really, really like a pop of color, but it's deep. It's, it's a deep red for me. And um, I had on animal print earrings. But <gasps> yes. Yeah, this, this is, these are the glasses that I wore then. It, the thing that I've tried to do again was, was challenge my way of thinking and my design, my style, my, you know, aesthetic, you know, around what, what I wanted to wear. And let me show you the difference. Do I have them over here? I don't really have all of them over here, but the, one of the first pair that I got, I'll show you. I love them because they're light and they're kind of conservative. They're purple. If you can't see. Yes. Okay. But you can tell that um, this was the first pair that I bought. Mm -hmm. One of the first pair, I bought two pair, this one. And um, I want to say it was like a blue. Is, that, is my blue over here? Let's see if my blue is over here. My blue is over here. No, that's pink. Where's my blue? Let's see the blue, which, which, which leads me to another question because you and I were talking about being avid collectors of mm -hmm. eyewear and uh, I've been collecting eyewear for over a decade now. So how long have you been building your collection? I think the very first pair that I bought was in late 2018, early 2019. Okay, so that's been... when I really started my collection. Yeah, yeah so it's fairly that, recent. And this, this was one of the first pair. I Where are my blue pair? Am I just overlooking them? They're, oh yeah, there they are, I see them. But you know, the, the reason I share with you um, the difference between like those light purple ones I just took off and here are the blue ones. 
is because oh. you can see the progression in terms of me pushing yes. the style trend. You know yes. what I mean? Because Bigger, the light bolder. purple and these are still fairly conservative. Mm -hmm. You know, they're still fairly conservative. And then I bought a purple pair that are just like this. They're on the other side of the room, so I, I won't show them to you. But for me, the progression in terms of the style and the trend and, you know, what I have, have like pushed to, it has helped me sort of see my style in a different way too. These are my pink ones, my pink turquoise. I love that color on you. That color is extremely flattering. Mm -hmm. Yes, just Thank enough you. contrast, but not too much. So not as bold and as stand out as the black pair, for example, mm -hmm. but still right. complementary with your complexion. It's nice. That's and these nice. are another, you were asking me about my photo shoot. So yes. I know the, the rimless, the black rimless, the clear rimless, and I also do these. Those are nice. Mm -hmm. yes. Because they go with anything. That's what you I was gonna say. I mean? You can't they go wrong with a pair like this. You know, I can do light, I can do dark, I can do, you know, multicolor patterns, all kind of stuff with these. Mm -hmm. A lot to choose from in terms of my photo shoot. But I'm actually going to defer to my stylist, my image consultant, right? when it comes to things. Because she may say, uh, leading up to your photo shoot, I want you to get a pair that look like this, mm -hmm. right? Because she collects eyewear as well. She does. She does. Okay. She does. So I'm kind of like, you know what? You know, you, you may point me to something that stretches me even beyond what I can even imagine right now. And I'm okay mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. I had a session with her last night and she had just come back from the beginning of one of the fashion week shows, right? Because again, she's an image consultant. So she, she goes to these places and she had on some, they looked like the black ones, the solid black ones that are kind of cat eyed that I have. And there were rhinestones all around the, Oof, the that must've been beautiful. Oh, it was. I was like, girl, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because she was like, I have on no makeup. And the first time I, I met with her, she was gorgeous. She had her makeup, you know, nice beat on her face and everything. She wasn't wearing glasses. So she wore the glasses because she didn't have on makeup and she was tired coming off of her trip. But yeah. I was like, you're fabulous even now, you know, <laughs> you're fabulous. You got all these rhinestones around your, your, the rims of your frames and you rocking it girl yes and that's one beautiful thing about glasses and optical wear in general is that it just elevates a look it's it's one of those accessories beyond you know headwear or earrings or necklaces mm -hmm. it's on your face it stands out it elevates your look it can compensate for example like her when she wasn't wearing makeup yeah. or if you're not feeling that well you just put on a pair of glasses and right away your whole mm -hmm. your whole world lights up and yes. you see the world differently as well because you're yeah, wearing your glasses. For sure. So. For sure. That um, is amazing. I've been wearing glasses for, I'm going to say since maybe about 15 years I've been wearing um, glasses. And the first time I bought glasses, I bought some really, really, really uber conservative lenses, you know, and, and um, frames. And I slept, I fell asleep on the sofa and broke one pair. <laughs> yeah, the, like I, I woke up and they were like this. And I was like, uh-oh. And I didn't replace them for a long time. I just got readers. Mm. So it, when I say a long time, it took me years. That's why I was like, you know, 18, 2018, 2019, somewhere around in there. And then when I found Zillow and I found Vogue Me, I was like, I don't have to pay three or $400 for a pair. Mm -hmm. Let me just just embrace this as part of my brand. Yes. You know? And that was life changing for me. Mm -hmm. Right. In so many ways, you know, again, in terms of pushing the envelope of my style and my brand and, you know, uh, the look that I have, all of that um, was impacted when I started collecting eyewear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to build on that. I remember one thing that came out of our first conversation is you mentioned that every time you would reach a certain career milestone in your yeah. business with a client, 
you would also reward yourself with a pair of eyewear. Like, tell us more about how that works. Because <laughs> I, I, I just think it's a fabulous story. I, I'm, I'm chuckling because that was where I started. Okay. Like, oh, you know, I'm going to get a pair of you know, glasses. And as Elu, you can get two pair and, you know, spend little or nothing, right? So I started getting two pair at a time. And when I started getting two pair at a time, I was like, I just need to reward myself. Mm -hmm. I just need to celebrate something that I've accomplished in my business. And I did a couple of times, but then it was like, I was celebrating anything and everything, (laughs) right? That's how I got to like 15, 16 pair, because I was like, oh, let's celebrate. Let me go buy a pair of glasses, you know? Mm -hmm. I had to stop. Like I said, I had to remove the app from my phone because I was still looking and going, oh, this is new. Oh, look at that. You know, Mm -hmm. and the first pair that I got, I was thinking about it. Uh, The first pair that I got was like a cat eye with um, like a um, like a glitter look in it, dark purple, black with a glitter in it. And then the the um, what do you call the arms Mm -hmm. uh, were pink. Okay, And I broke those too. I can't wear those. I actually went back to look to see if they carried them so that I could reorder them and they don't have them anymore. Mm. I just probably got to replace them at some point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would make sense. I mean, could you get them repaired at a, at a local optical shop? I don't shop? think so. No. Yeah, I don't yeah. think so. I probably could. I hadn't thought about it. I'm just like, I need a new pair. <laughs> so nice excuse to just go back. I just need a new pair. Yes. Know. Well, that is kind of the flip side, though, of buying off of those online websites, that mm-hmm. sometimes the quality may not be as appealing yeah. if you spend, you know, versus a pair that's bespoke or higher quality, handmade, European, Japanese, and whatnot. So mm-hmm. you get, you know, the fashion style and the quantity, but that you don't always get the, the quality. If something The thing I love about Zilu and even uh, Bodhi, too, I noticed they give you tools like they give you, you know, the pupillary oh. distance ruler so you can see what yours is. Okay. Um, and that's really the distance between your two pupils so that they know where your lens needs to be when you yes. order them. They also give you like this keychain that's actually a mini screwdriver. So you can repair your glasses if anything happens. You can, yeah, do that you at can home. tighten the screws. It's a, a little phillips screwdriver Mm -hmm. and you can tighten i got several of these by the way and there's another part to it as well uh there's a flat and a phillips it's a mini screwdriver with two types of points to them so they give you some tools to sort of manage if your you know screws get loose or if you need to know if you're ordering glasses you need to know your pupillary distance oh yes two numbers I literally asked my um, my eye doctor and she wouldn't give it to me. Why so is I that? To, I went to Walmart. I don't know. I went to Walmart. I had to pay for my prescription because she has a um, an eyewear place that's part of her practice. Mm-hmm. So um, that's why I had to pay for it. It was like $35 or something like that. It wasn't a lot, but I thought I got to pay you for my prescription. That was her way of getting what she needed without me buying glasses from her. Ah. But they wouldn't give me the, the PD. So I went to Walmart and they measured me for free and told me. So I wrote it on my prescription and first time I ordered, I put it in there and I just haven't had to add it since. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember the very first time that I ordered a pair of glasses online and it was also my very last time. Um, I had the wrong PD. So when I got mm-hmm. the glasses, I couldn't see anything. I couldn't do anything with them. Mm-hmm. So I ended up going to an optical store and they fixed it for me because I really mm-hmm. liked the, the frame, but the lenses were, it just wasn't working. Um, and since then I've never ordered online. I, I, I always buy my glasses at an optical shop or I buy the frames online, but then I get the lenses fitted um, at a store. That's smart. Yeah, like even this pair, I bought them. It's a pair of Dior Stellar um, glasses. And I love them because they're a mix of traditional with the kind of like the cat eye shape at the top, mm-hmm. but then you have the edginess with the, the angles at the bottom. And I bought them off Essence, which is a luxury uh, website because they were on sale. And I had them fitted at my local optical shop to make sure that everything would, would be perfect. 
this so, is a dark blue pair. And I rarely wear these because this was the second pair that I got from Vogue Me. Okay. And something's wrong with the lenses because whenever I wear them over a period of time, I get a headache. Oh. So I know, and even looking at them, there's some sort of warped feel. So the lenses are incorrect, but you know, that's, that's the risk of ordering stuff online. That's like correct. I reached out to them and they said that, you know, rather than send them back, we will note your account for a credit. So I have a credit with them, but oh. I've never gone back and, and, you know, ordered anything else. Mm -hmm. So my spaceship glasses and those blue glasses I got from Vogue Me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you know exactly which ones I'm talking about. Yes, I, I do. Right? I do. You know? So yeah. spaceship glasses. I like that. Yeah, yeah, my spaceship glasses. But the rest of them all came from Zilu. Yeah. Like I'm committed to to working with Zilu. I've seen some other uh, providers, and some of them have been, um, you know, comparable. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm just I love the process of Zilu. You know, I I know what what my um, width needs to be. Uh, I'm a wide person because my head is wider this way. And, you know, they, they determine the glasses and, and the distance here because of that. You also need to have your PD, right? Mm -hmm. But, you, you know, it's also kind of the size of your head and what that arm, the length of that arm needs to be to wrap around your ear, you know, to stay on your face kind of thing. I just love them. You know, they're, they're not... Um, as someone who invested early on in, you know, some of those more expensive brand frames that broke, that were still pretty conservative, I'm really grateful for Zilu because I can, you know, venture out, I can do things different. Their, their quality is pretty good for what I'm, you know, the value I'm getting for, for what I, I get in terms of the eyewear as well. So I like that. And I'm not really necessarily a designer person, but I'm still able to, to stretch the envelope, so to, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, with, with what I order at Zilu. Right. And I, I do want to say for our, you know, viewers and listeners um, that this, um, this episode is not sponsored by Zilu <laughs> or Vogue Me. It's really yeah. Wendy Y who loves those websites and has bought quite a few pairs mm -hmm. off of uh, the websites. But I mean, Zilu... And Vogue Me, if you want to sponsor us, that would be great. But the I would is love not sponsored. it. I actually <laughs> sent them something and said I'd like to be a brand ambassador. I never heard back from them. Oh, you know, but, okay. But you know, that was before I knew about the group of fourteen thousand. You know, mm. they probably were, were like, we got so many that we can't we can't do that. But I could be a commercial for them for sure. You know? <laughs> I have a, a colleague that um, is a Vogue Me brand ambassador. Oh. And I don't know what her arrangement is with them, but can I tell you, she must have like 30 or 40 pair. And I'm, I'm always watching her, what pair she got on a day. That's why I knew about the black ones that were like the burgundy ones I have, because she has the black ones, right? And she's got the floral pair that I have. And they all have comparable frames, you know, both Vogue Me and Zilu and some of the others, they have comparable frames. So um, I watch her because when I tell you she's like a different pair, she has a yellow pair, she has a pink pair, she has a white pair, you know, I'm just like, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to contain myself as I watch her because <laughs> I'm like, oh, I could have a white pair, I could have a green pair, I could have, you know, like, so okay, Wendy, why calm, calm it down, you good. Yeah. So let's find a way to get you to become one of those um, brand ambassadors, either Vogue Me that. or Zill yeah. or Diff or Warby Parker. Maybe that would get you to try a different brand mm -hmm. like a Warby Parker. I personally, I am um, a big fan of Jins, which is a Japanese uh, brand. I think we talked about Jins when uh, um, during one of our connects. Um, I discovered the brand when I lived in Japan and I think I have probably three or four pairs of Jins and they just have the best service, the best glasses. You walk in, 30 minutes, you walk out with your pair of glasses. One hour, you're That's done awesome. with your eye exam. Your glasses are fitted. You walk away That's with them. Awesome. It's like the McDonald's slash H&M of eyewear in Japan. It's it's amazing. So if I were to become a brand ambassador for, for, for like a fast optical chain or brand, it would be Jim's. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. Good to pull up, Jim. Um, so we've talked about your photo shoot. We've talked about, you know, growing your collection of glasses with each career milestone and achievement. So what's next for you, Wendy? Why? What are you contemplating for the next, you know, until the end of the year and for 2022? Wow. Um, between now and the end of the year, I have um, um, a flagship brand that I've been building since maybe a little over a year ago. And it started with the launch of my web TV show and audio podcast. And so I'm going to be launching, I've launched the web TV show and audio podcast. I've launched the, um, the name of the brand is Profitable Coaching Conversations. And the show is the Profitable Coaching Conversations show with Wendy Y. Bailey. And um, what I do is I host an episode with a guest and then I host an episode with just me sharing bonus content uh, two times a week. And at ProfitableCoachingConversations.com, all of the episodes are there. If you want to plug into the, the audio part of it, you can do that. You can watch the episodes um, either way. All of it is there. And over the year, I've launched a private Facebook community for Profitable Coaching Conversations called the Profitable Coaching Society. So ProfitableCoachingSociety.com. And um, I've launched a club on Clubhouse called the Profitable Coaching Club. And the whole brand is a high value, high touch brand to serve coaches who want to grow their business. So it, it's focused on all the areas that I mentioned earlier, but it's really dedicated to um, adding value in the marketplace. So between now and the end of the year, I'm going to be launching my signature course for that brand called Profitable Coaching Conversations. And it's primarily around sales conversations that convert. So it's getting people to understand all that goes into creating a thriving business to you know, making sure that they are taking the, the measures and building a foundation and upon which to grow and scale their business. And I'm excited about that because it's the largest program that I've ever delivered, I've ever created and I've ever delivered. I've done a lot in more than 19 years, but this one is gonna be like the largest I've ever done. It's longer, it's more meaty in terms of content. It's more of a, a hybrid approach to a program because I'm going to be in there working with people one-on-one -on -one and in groups, as well as some, you know, automated content, some drip content that they can access as well. So that's what I'm focused on between now and the end of the year is preparing for that. So. Wow, that is a big, meaty, juicy project that yeah. you have on the back burner. That is amazing. And so when are you thinking of launching this program for anyone who might be interested? Well, one of the things that, that I'm doing, and, and if you go to ProfitableCoachingConversations.com, there's a place where you can download a free gift that I have. So if you're on that list to get the free gift, then I'll tell you when it actually launches. But leading up to that, there are some, some, um, some people that I've started working with, and I want to really get them to a place where they're ready for that. And right now, they're in like... If, if I were to use like the first through 12 grade school sort of way of thinking of it, they're probably in about the ninth or 10th grade. And I want to get them to like the 11th or 12th because this is like college level, mm -hmm. right? This is mastery level for them. And so I've got to get them there. So it's going to take me a couple more months to do that. And I think I'll start talking about it and really working on launching it. Um, by the first of the year, okay. like starting it by the first of the year so that, you know, in November and December, I'll start talking about it and I'll start really promoting it and launching it. But if people go there, join the, um, get the download, then they'll know when that launch is coming. Okay. And can you tell us more about the download that people would be getting when they sign yes. up on your website? Yeah, it's a great question. It's a special report. It's called what stops your sales success and what to do about it. So, and in, you know, one of the things that I like to do, and I'm sort of a content machine, content creating machine, that's like my middle name is content creation because I, I believe in, in content. I embed links into my content. So you're not just getting the report, you're also getting, you know, links to other things and access to other stuff that will help you as part of that special report as well. 
Okay. And I like that you're offering this because you're right. I think, you know, for virtually anybody, but especially for coaches where sales is critical, it's a critical part of growing the business. It is, you know, it can be a barrier, it can be a blockage. So it's great that you've actually developed a tool with linking to tons of other resources to help coaches kind of unlock their potential when it comes to sales. So that's, that's yeah. really exciting. Unfortunately, most coaches don't sell well. Mm-hmm. Right. I could imagine because that. they're fearful of it. Yes. Or they say they don't like it. But if mm-hmm. you're an entrepreneur, you got to like sales, yeah. you know, so it's a mindset shift that has to happen for them to step into selling with confidence. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's where I come in. I, I teach and train and coach on how to sell with confidence. Mm-hmm. You're right, because I can, you know, not that I'm a coach myself, but I could imagine if I had a service, I would have some I would have some limiting beliefs around selling myself. And I would say probably even more so as a woman, as a woman of color, you know, making sure that I'm, that I know my worth, that I know, you know, how to position myself to stand out, what my value is, what my offering is, making sure everything is crystal clear, first and foremost, and then being able to articulate it in a way that's compelling and enticing for prospects to, to you know, to buy into. Um, sure. Yeah, it's a stressful mm-hmm. process. It's, uh, it's, it's deeply personal as well it very much is out there. and it starts with mindset yes like my personal mantra is mindset is everything it's because if you want to sell mindset is everything if you want to partner with people mindset is everything if you want to invite or offer people opportunities to work with you then mindset is everything if you want to increase your fees mindset is everything mm. mindset is the heart of anything and everything in your business especially if you want to grow it You've got to work on the mindset piece heavily, and then you can work on like the tactics or you can work on systems and structure and resources and you can do all of that, but it's got to start there. Right, right. So it's, there. so it's like the mindset first, then the strategy, then the tactics and the execution to really mm-hmm. have that flow mm-hmm. of a system. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's yeah, for great. sure. That's great. So we've talked about the professional, the exciting professional projects. Yeah. What about on the personal side or even on the, I know you've talked about, you know, kind of taking a step back from the glasses collection, but come on, let's be honest. I'm mean, <laughs> sure there's another Don't pair. push me, don't push me, <laughs> don't push me. I'm sure there's another yeah, pair I, that you're, that you book Mari, that you might be contemplating or just like from a personal perspective, what else is, what else is kind of, you know, making you give, making you excited when you buy Bailey? Well, the, the, the big thing that came up when you said that was really between now and the end of the year, I want to focus on my health. I've had some health challenges, um, particularly in the past four or five years, um, some before that, but definitely in the last four or five years, I got to make sure I'm getting my, my health together. Yes. Like I've got to make that a priority. All the other personal stuff is unfolding and it's happening and you know I'm not necessarily planning for it and let me tell you what I mean um for me for about nine years ten years I've been wanting to get my nose pierced and I actually did that in February I wanted to do it in January for my birthday but I can't remember what was going on but I ended up not doing it but I got it done in February and I just changed out the jewelry so now I have a hoop that's part of my my expanding style is to do that. Uh, Like I said, it's unfolding without me really thinking about it. I'm just very intentional and I'm doing it. The other thing was changing my hair. You know, this is a a new look for me to have this coily, curly look, and I kind of like it. I started growing my hair because of COVID and the shutdown, and I didn't want to go to a barber shop to get my hair cut because that's where it was. And Mm -hmm. it was really, really short. And so as it grew, I was kind of like, you know, I'm kind of feeling a little bit more hair on my head. I, I kind of like that. But then I started looking at other possibilities for styles. And that's how I got to this, right? And I found a salon near me that could do it. And, and I really liked the, the stylist and I liked what she did. So that's another thing that I'm doing um, in terms of a personal look. But in terms of personal, it's it's really about my health more than anything. It's mm-hmm. It's eating right, uh, starting to do some movement, because I'm not a workout girl, but starting to do some movement and um, just starting to feel consistently better because I'm managing my health better. 
So that's a big one for me. That's a real big one that's high on the list. And if my doctors heard me, they would be like, yes, I hear you. I'm glad to I'm, hear I'm that. I'm going to do it. Yes, I'm gonna do it. we want to keep you from... as long as possible. We want to make sure that you're fit yes. and healthy because at the end of the day, health is wealth. You know, mindset yes. is everything is. and health, health is, is wealth. wealth. Yes, yes, I agree. I come from a, a long lineage. My mom is 90. Her mom was 91 when she mm -hmm. passed. You know, my dad was 76 when he passed. Um, his parents were in their 60s and 70s when they passed. So I come from a long lineage. And what I like to say is if I don't screw it up, I'm going to live a long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, but I can eat somebody <laughs> like around the table. <laughs> and that's not necessarily something to be proud of, you know, so I got to push away from the table. I got to drink more water, you know, I got to, you know, take better care of myself. So that's going to be a, a big goal for me for the rest of the year you know, and, and beyond. Well, I wish you the best of luck. So much success on a professional level, on a personal level, you know, managing your health so that you can, you know, be all in when you launch your program, you're fit and healthy and have tons of energy because I know it's going to be a success and you will need as much, you know, like energy to make sure that you can meet all the demands and all the people asking for your time and your help and be there. Yeah. So it's going to be amazing. I'm so happy yes. for you. Yes. Thank Very you so much cool. for that. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. Really so in terms of finding you, so you've mentioned um, your website. Um, mm -hmm. What about social media? Where can we find you on social media? I am Wendy Y. Bailey on all platforms. And I say all, but that's Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Clubhouse, YouTube, um, that's say LinkedIn. No, not yet. LinkedIn. And I think I'm on Tumblr and Pinterest, but I don't post on those two, but all the other ones, I do some random posting across all of those. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Wendy Y. Bailey, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here with us tonight. And, uh, yes, have a good night, everybody. And make sure you follow you. Wendy Y. Bailey on social media because she posts amazing tips, advice, and you want to stay connected with her when she launches her fabulous program by the end of the year so that you can take your business to a whole other level. Thank you, Wendy Y. Thank you so much, Christina.